we're here in Van Dam on a super big minus 1.8 low tide. Uh, you can see behind me the tides are so low that the rocks are really exposed. We're getting hundreds and hundreds of abalone rock pickers and divers. Well, no, some confusion as to whether they fill the tags in a boat particularly. The law states if it's got a motor, any flotation that has a motor device, yes, it has to be filled out there. But like they were using paddles, mm. kind of like a kayak. So they could fill out the tags right here on the shoreline. <laughs> Hello. We have a group of fish and game biologists here that are doing what is called a creole survey. Basically just checking all the abalone hunters that are out here and uh, just checking size, asking where they found them, you know, the specific location, how long it took them to get it. There's a whole ton of questions they're asking them. Basically just to see what our abalone resource is doing. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Well, we'll find out one day soon. So exactly what are you doing here? You're measuring the abalone. We're measuring some monster size abalone here. <laughs> how, well, how big is monster here? Well, this one is almost a nine inch. That's right a nine incher. This one right here is eight and a half inches or eight and a quarter nice. inches. Nice. Yeah. Many? Very nice. Yeah, they, they got all these diving. Did a really good job. You weren't rock picking then. You were actually diving down about how deep? 15 feet. 15 feet. Two good. on one. Two on one. Okay. And then you're asking them uh, location, where they got it from? Uh-huh, how long they were out, um, whether they picked any, and yeah, whether they picked any they that they had to put back that were too small. Yeah. And, uh, and then we also look to see if they have any cuts. But oh these, yeah, very important. This has, some of the others way would have deep cuts, which would indicate that that they're probably, you know, prying them prying the wrong direction. Wrong and, or and the ab bar could maybe be too sharp, possibly. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so the significance of why we're looking for that is to see how many of these uh, may have may have injuries like that, which which when we look at the numbers of abalone that needed to be put back because they were too small, we can you know assume that, that maybe a certain percentage of those may have had these injuries, which could be fatal to them since they're hemophiliacs. Right. They, they're not able to. Their blood is not able to clot. So mm -hmm. so that would indicate that you would have that much more harvest. It's very important because I've um, seen this quite a bit in, in watching these app divers that they pick undersized abalone and it's important, like she's saying, if they cut them, they could bleed to death. And the smaller size abalone, if uh, they're cut and they bleed to death, it just means they are, you know, we lose that many abalone. Right. Yeah, there's not, and they're not going to be doing any reproduction for us and it's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I think yesterday we had maybe about 200 people that came through. Mm -hmm. Today we have a, a little less, I'm not sure yeah. how much, but right. probably more like about 125 today, I probably guess. So far, yeah. It's more of a snapshot in time of, of kind of looking to see what the what the harvest is and, you know, all in one day. And so we were out here, <clears throat> we're out here yesterday and today because these are significant minus tide times. So it's a little easier for the pickers to get out there and, and actually the divers too with the, you know, the water's a little lower. So. Wonderful. So, and it draws a lot more people on these days. Yeah. <laughs> Great. My name's Dennis Blakeman. Good to meet you, Dennis. And you're going to show us the proper way to pry an abalone yeah. off the rock. There you go. Go for it. <laughs> so you just put it underneath and then pry up on it. Like that. <laughs> and then grab it. There you go. And if well, you, what would happen if you did it the opposite way? If you do way? it the other way, you just go on under and you cut, you'll cut the bottom of the foot there. We love them. We eat them all year, but we don't eat them at the summertime because it's a disease. You know what we use them for? Fish bait. That's all we use them for in the summer. It's nothing illegal, but... Eat a wolf? But any, any, oh. anything. Yeah. 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 Anything with two shells, uh -huh. clams, uh -huh. mussels, um, these things, what happen is they absorb too, too much toxins. And they become poisonous, yes. Yeah, so they're they're very they could be very poisonous. Okay, I put back. Wow, what a day! Ocean was just beautiful today, nice and calm. We had a lot of successful abalone hunters coming out here. Um, we have abalone season that's going to be open until the rest of this month and into June, and we are also still going to have some really low minus tides in June. So. 
might want to check them out and find a time to come on out here during those low tides because especially in June our ocean are, is at its calmest so yeah great time to come out and go ab diving although keep in mind as you can see behind me the kelp bed is getting thicker so you might want to think about bringing kayaks or a boat to get past the kelp either that or wait till the tide gets a little bit higher so the kelp is starting to stand up a little bit making it easier to swim through and diving into so really important because i was talking with some folks yesterday that was having a tough time crawling over this kelp and yet the ones that with the kayaks they were having a great time so listen i want to say goodbye and see you next show take care <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is Charlie Lorenz, the abalone hunter, and we're here today at the Mendocino County Courthouse. Uh, we're introducing Bruce Lehman here, one of our head coordinators for the Mendocino Abalone Watch. He's basically going to give us a rundown or a history of how the Mendocino Abalone Watch, or MAW, um, basically, and how they help develop some sentencing guidelines for abalone poaching or for abalone fines. And uh, I'm just gonna turn it over to Bruce right here. And Bruce, what is the history with uh, Ma and the courthouse right now? Well, last fall, Ma did a petition drive. We collected 655 uh, petitions, signature on a petition calling for the judges to issue stiffer sign, fines and penalties for abalone poaching. Mm -hmm. Last fall, we met with presiding judge Henderson and delivered these, these petitions to him. At that time, he expressed that he was sympathetic to our cause, but said we needed to work out the details with the district attorney's office. I see. So we contacted Mr. Assistant District Attorney Stone here in Fort Bragg and met with him several times and worked out sentencing guidelines that were mutually agreement to mutually agreeable to his office and to Ma and to what our petition called for. Uh, Monday or Tuesday of this week. Uh, District Attorney Stone presented these guidelines to the uh, bench to oh. Judge Brennan. Well, yeah. The unfortunate thing, Judge Brennan didn't see eye to eye with them. One of the strengths of our, our argument was that people drive many hours to come to our coast and to poach abalone. If they're going to get caught doing a um, crime, they should do the community service here in our town. They should stay in our hotels, eat our restaurants, food, and clean our beaches. I, I mean, if you're going to do the crime, you should pay the time. I see, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we're highly disappointed in Judge Henderson, Brent, Judge Brendan's decision to let people do their community service in their backyard, so mm -hmm. to speak. Okay, so, um, are you then going to be trying to start any kind of petition to try and resolve this problem or is there other avenues you're thinking of in trying to um, help with um, this situation? Right now we are considering a couple of avenues. We're trying to get all the coordinators, coordinators together at this point so we can develop a strategy. We're not giving up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good luck with your venture and thanks again. And another thing I'd like to point oh, out yes, yes. Is, is that only a small portion of the poachers actually wind up here in court. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. important that the ones we do catch be made aware of the fact that we're serious about this. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you again for all your hard work and <laughs> good <Yeah>. luck. Thanks. <laughs> okay, this is Charlie Lorenz with the Abalone Hunter. Good diving out there. Be safe and be good with the abs. Abalone. <laughs>